ladies and gentlemen, Worlds has ended. However, we are still here and we are still going to look at a couple of games on the NA server. Jeremy Bernstein is the name of Chovy's account. I wonder what the lore is behind that. A very Yiddish name. So, yeah, I, I'm intrigued, but... We see him play Lissandra here versus the Kiki Kikiana. And personally, I do have a little bit of vested interest in exploring how people beat Kiana, as I do play quite a bit of Kiana nowadays. So we are going to find out exactly how Chovy is going to go about that today. Now, in... The top lane. For him, we have a Fiora that is going up against a Singed. His jungler, Viego, is facing off against a Yi, who seems to be a Yi main as well. Then we have Ezreal and Renata Glask on the enemy team with Varus and Karma on his team. I would give that to Karma, uh, to, to Karma uh, Varus, definitely. Okay, we see Jeremy Bernstein. So what he does here is he moves between the minions. Um, and he works on disallowing the Kiana access to the wave. Now, he still gets the CS, at least some. And it seems like Kiana must have destroyed a ward. Yeah, that's the CS score. All right, she's moving into the jungle here. As Viego is caught out on his try to steal. All right, so level two, he doesn't hit the W. And with Kiana, you always have to be careful. It's really unfortunate Kiana actually got that kill. So Shovi did get quite a bit um, in the beginning. He did get quite a bit of lead on the wave because he was able to... So basically, right, on Kiana, you want to pre prevent champions, ranged champions that are not AD carries. You want to prevent them to step between you and the wave um, so that you are you you have to be in a certain range of the wave for the minions to aggro them when they attack you. So you have to find that out and you have to keep in that range. Now there are champions that can absolutely delete you. So Syndra and AD carries. Um, Victor with Q Max can also do a lot of damage if he has Aerie. Um, but those are like the main things that you have to be scared, scared of, right? And anything else, you would just move forward into them, start trading them, because if they trade auto attacks with you and they get the minion aggro, then you win. Especially since you, you benefit from trading evenly um, or slightly in their favor. You benefit from that as you are a... All right, let's see what Chovy does here. Yeah, he's going to get flipped, but he still gets the run out. He did take a tower shot, and what the hell happened bot lane? Alright, well, a 3 for one And Jovi Jill will just have to recall. Goddamn, dude, Kiana, Kiana is a scary one, man. Kiana is a scary, scary mid-champion. So let's see, we teleport back into the mid lane, catching the wave here. And he is positioning in a trading position, right? So you can kind of see that uh, he is playing very forward. Um, because it's not important to, to him to optimize for HP. Because he has a huge HP lead already, right? So this is very basic. The things that I'm explaining here are very basic, but um, I think I think these kind of things matter, and I think that's what makes makes cast really useful is uh, being able to, you know, point out point out these uh, yeah these rather important little details in laning. Okay, we see a ward placement here. Obviously, with this game being so not standard, it's such a chaotic game. You can take a lot from it. Um, because like oftentimes standard games, they look very different because pros read a lot into them. But in these chaotic games, you'll see that they oftentimes 
can't really track the jungle. Um, I mean, I'm pretty sure Chovy is able to, but often, you know, they're not 100% sure where the jungle is, so they do things that are a little bit more by the book, right? Because obviously, as you master the game, you can uh, you can do some things that would would be a mistake if a lesser player would make it make do make that play. But um, since you are able to track the jungle, for example, you don't have to hover to the side that you place a ward on, for example. Um, but that obviously all, all only counts if you actually know where the enemy jungler is, right? So if you play on the lane, there are a couple of parts of the lane that you want to play in slash not play in. And it's actually interesting that he elected to stay here because he's kind of low on mana. And the problem is he is not going to get a quick enough recall here for Kiana not to be able to roam. Um, we'll see what exactly he can do with this. Right now, his bot lane is kind of in a scary situation, right? So Kiana could have decided to roam here and let the wave stay in the middle instead of shoving out and potentially gain a advantage as she has her level 6. And uh, yeah, she, sh she could have been bot lane with Master Yi and they could have killed, killed them. So I, I'm not 100% sure how good that recall was there. Purely out of like, you know, the, the game state situation, right? You be, I think it's better to ping away your bot lane, wait for them to retreat. And then you can actually recall. All right. So we're going to look at Singed here. Singit. All right, ultimate is available. So we could even ultimate if we wanted to. But he is just going to press the W. Yeah, I'm not surprised. Kiana is going to pick up a wave advantage here. So she should be on a slight XP advantage. All right, Dragon picked up for the blue team as well. And it looks like the blue team has quite the sizable lead so far. And Kiana is not that far behind. All right, we're going to ult Kiana here. Kiana can just defensively ult. Ah, that wasn't the best Kiana ult, but yeah, she will get out of there. That was actually a beautiful escape by Kiana. I think she's going to trade though. Yeah, she does trade with the Viego, which is very good for her. Even though she loses the wave here, she gets a shutdown. So definitely not going to complain about that one, are we? And generally, I would say that she has... She has a pretty she has a pretty fortunate situation for herself here. Okay, so this one I'm not 100% sure about. She is going edge of night first, which uh it doesn't give her the defensive boost of any of these items that she could get as mythics. It doesn't give her the ward clearing potential. It just gives her a one-time shield. Yeah, I mean, Lissandra, she does, uh, you know, she, she does struggle with popping shields a little bit as she is quite low range. But I think if you can hit a claw onto Kiana, at that point, you are pretty, uh, pretty good as the item kind of got invalidated. So, yeah, it's rough. It's, uh, it's an interesting choice to go for that. We also see Kiana go for the tier here. This is also always what you do versus matchups that you can't just like one tap um because it's just it's just much safer and much more reliable to go for the uh, go for the tier as you'll get more shove you know you'll you'll be able to throw out your abilities many more times and um, later on you get a very powerful item option as well all right, we're going to be pushing out and just roaming, looking at the map, right? Kind of just fogging. So that that's also something that you uh, can consider slash think about is that anytime you are in the fog of wand, you're not on a ward, the enemy team has to ask themselves what is going on here. And so even though maybe you are not any going anywhere, 
every single time there is pings, there's question mark pings, and then there is a decision to be made by the enemy bot lane. Is she roaming here or is she not roaming here, right? <clears throat> so it's very, very favorable. And it's something that I, for example, I do always um, when when I play in high reloads is that I never stay in, in the lane if I don't have a specific plan for the wave or I need to get XP or gold, right? So if I say... <clears throat> If I say, see, the minion has still 100% HP, the, win the waves just touched e each other, then uh, I'm just going to go ahead and, you know, just let them sit for a second and wait. And sometimes, for example, sometimes your enemy throws all the spells in the wave because he thinks, oh, you roamed, right? And then you get to move in and then you get to decide whether or not you handshake the... He threw, he threw spells at the wave, right? So you either handshake the push or you throw the spells at him and gain an advantage. You do that two, three times and you win the lane. Like, it's, uh, it's a very efficient strategy um, because obviously you, you remove information and as long as you have a plan to follow it up, you can usually just make sure that the enemy is kind of forced to do something that is odd. For them or not in their plan and you have planned for this so you know generally a very very good idea all right we're going to be teleporting back into the mid lane again everfrost has been acquired the stopwatch is available too so you don't have to ult yourself either and you know that kiana is not going to interact with you much so you just want to kind of move and mirror kiana if you can slash be ahead of her yeah, I'm gonna see a W onto the crab here, and we are passing around Ezreal E, which means uh, there is a ward here. Flash ultimate, Varus ultimate is going to connect, but this is uh, this is not a whole a whole lot of damage. And now we are in a little bit of trouble because Kiana still has her ultimate, Yi still has their ultimate, you know, and uh, Renata still has her ultimate, but you used Flash and ultimate, and so did Varus. Kind of unfortunate. Um, bit of a bit of a forced gank in my opinion. And now Kiana gets to set up a dive here with Master Yi and stuff, and it's going it's going to work out 100 percent yeah. So Kiana does get shut down. Or no, she she does get executed. So we're just going to kind of try to keep Singed away, but unfortunately Singed is there to keep me or keep keep Chovy. Uh, from knocking down the plates, you know, if, if that was me, in my mind, that would be totally fine, as top lane will probably be taken down here by the Fiora, right? So, even though he is there and y you don't get it, um, your team still gets a pretty big advantage. Kind of odd of Fiora to do what she's doing here. Because on the minimap, it seems to me that the wave is still not pushing out. And it's still pushing for red. And that means that Fiora should have pushed this into the tower. And then uh, she would have, she would have, you know, actually gained an advantage. Which now she didn't. <clears throat> Dragon picked up here for the red team this time. Who seems to have control over the bot side. Um, Ezreal, not the hardest snowballer. So Ezreal's like a, Ezreal's a, Champion, that's kind of weird, because if he falls behind, he can still be good. If he's ahead, he can still be good. But he's never super oppressive unless the person is good. And if the person is good, then it actually doesn't matter that much how much gold he has. Sounds kind of weird, but it's like... Vayne is the opposite. Now, I mean, Vayne's not the opposite, but Vayne is a little bit a little bit different in the, in the case that... You know, a, a vein. If she's fed, you know who's who. You know who's the ex exact opposite, actually, misfortune. So a good misfortune, right, can still be absolutely useless if behind. A bad misfortune, if ahead, is ridiculously strong because she just walks at people, auto attack, Q, auto attack, and they just die, kind of. 
and she just has to like stay there and ult. And Jinx also much more much more straightforward, right? Stuff like that. Um, Ezreal not so much. Ezreal, Ezreal much more says much more about the skill of the player in my mind than he does. <laughs> Too bad. <laughs> Too bad, Kiana. <laughs> Too bad. Uh, Kiana felt herself for a second there. She was like, I'm gonna get out. No, Chovy says and presses W. All right, exhaust available here for Chovy as he moves down into the bot lane. I'm expecting. Yeah, this is a kill for Yi. Will he be able to kill him generally? I'm not expecting it because he does. I, I don't think he would have enough damage to kill Master Yi. Um, as that guy is still full life and yeah, I, I don't, I don't, I don't think that you do enough damage um, on a burst mage. But yeah, it is what it is. We're going to be taking down the turret here, and this is very solid. We have very good map awareness here of Chovy, as uh, he realizes exactly where to go and which lane is open where he can do something. And his goal is obviously to not stay in the mid lane as his bot lane is going to take over the map from the middle much more efficiently than from the bot lane and someone like him a champion like him benefits from being in the side lane as you can be a little bit more smoke and mirrors with your positioning on the map and so on and so forth shadow Fla shadow fire shadow flame hmm shadow flame i think picked up here for chovy as um he will now he will now have considerably more burst. I would I would expect it to be like 70% of Kiana's HP. Um if she doesn't block a spell with her with her shield. Alright, Singe just taken down. Just like that. Bada boom, bada bam. Obviously he wasn't really able to stack his demonic, so. Very, very uh, little defense. And I mean, he's 0-6. It's a singed. We're not surprised. It doesn't make him useless. Not as useless as... Um, as you would think. Ezreal? Actually quite far behind in CS. If you look at the bot lane. He does have some kills, but... Actually quite far behind in CS. And... Uh, Lissandra's also pulling ahead of the Kiana here in farm, and this should not happen in my mind, because Kiana is actually very good at picking up farm and working the side lane. And a lot of the time, um, b before the nerf, Kiana used to be that champion that just constantly roams and doesn't kill, and just kills and doesn't farm. That is not really possible anymore. In order to reach a decent state in mid game, you really need to stay on top of your CSing. Um, that be, be that in the jungle or be that on other lanes. As kill onto Kiana is being picked up here. All right. Well, there's there's not. Yeah, there's not much we can do. Okay, teleport by Chovy coming out here. That is actually very interesting. Hmm. Okay. Well, shit. So, I mean, okay, listen. I actually kind of find these teleports weird, but you can clearly see that this teleport is a teleport of... Oh, I see a wave there that's, like, standing there, and it's going to kind of be an unfavorable wave state for our team so i'm just going to shove it out real quick crash it and fix the wave uh through that i think wave states are something that is super underrated in platinum and uh, kind of gets gets to be a thing in diamond from what i've seen obviously i haven't worked my way also through diamond but from what i've seen and so you know it's it's a it is something that you want to track a lot as a mid lane player that is able to shove waves quickly, for example. You you can almost always kind of fix these broken wave states, kind of walk up, try to get, you know, get a wave out, get a wave into the turret. And then it bounces back and it creates a favorable wave state for your team. As we see, he is very, very responsive 
with what he's doing. He saw Master Yi push in top lane. He was still planning to go bot lane, but then Fiora decided, and so he went in to the top. He doesn't have TP right, available right now, so he wants to stay in a lane that is close to the main objective, right? The, the goal is kind of, if you have TP, stay away from the objective. If you don't have TP, stay close to it, right? That doesn't always work. Um, for champions like Talon, that doesn't always translate, right? But generally, that is the that is the rule of thumb. Okay, so we pick up a kill here onto the Singe. Nothing. It's not a big enough pickup to warrant a Baron, I think. But here we might have some trouble. Kiana looking for a solo kill onto the Viego. Viego will stay alive, though. And now Master Yi is dead. So that means... Okay, Viego. Like... Viego, just do Baron. What? What, what? what is this elo? What, what was Viego's idea there? Viego just tower dives. Homeboy, if you just go Baron, it's such an easy win. Wild. Honestly. It is wild. The decisions that some people make. Alright, well, it is what it is. Alright, I'm gonna pick up... The blue buff and move into the bottom lane here now. Right? So I'm expecting his teleport to be up... Kinda soon. We, we don't really know. Because spellbook right and i have to i have to tell you i have no clue how spellbook works okay kiana can't really do much against lissandra if lissandra has um a stopwatch we also see a magi is coming out here and chovy will do a lot a lot of damage so don't get that wrong like chovy's damage right now is out of this world as he is building a rabidon's death cap because he doesn't even, he, he seems to not even feel pressured enough to work on a Zonia. He is just going for full damage. As I mean, he, he's also kind of sitting back and his team is doing like most of the work, to be honest. But we'll see. You know, we might still have some moments. But so far, this has been a masterclass in just moving around the map, kind of looking at which waves are open, where can we get farm, what can we do. And I mean, you know, 23 minutes, we have 271 CS, right? So this is this is just kind of the Chovy way of doing things. Is he just like roams around the map and picks up waves after waves, after waves after waves, some kills in between, and then even more waves. This is actually, yeah, this is actually a troublesome position, but he manages to claw himself out there. And now the dragon is the objective. Recall together with this team and they are going to run down into the bottom side of the map. Rabidon Seth Cap together with Magice and Shadowfire available here for Jovi. That makes for a lot of damage and you can't forget that Everfrost as a mythic item gives you AP per legendary as well. So that makes Rabidons even more effective. It's pretty neat. I have seen better Kiana ults. Yeah, that's a little bit weird. I mean, they did manage to pick up Viego, but now Kiana could have had a great angle there. She didn't really find it, though. Okay, Chovy baiting out the ultimate here from the Renata Glass. Renata Glass kill will be picked up as we will probably see a claw through here. Yeah. All right, we're looking at Ezreal. No ultimate available with WQ and Ezreal goes down. Look at the ridiculous damage out of Chovy. Just the casual 300 farm at 25 minutes makes a whole lot of sense. 
he hasn't even he hasn't even done any like farming of camps by the way like he could have even more farm if he wanted to and this is also like a high high level game right so people are people are actually thinking about their farm um i think at lower lows you would you would be able to get gather even more of an advantage i mean oftentimes there's more fighting as well but i mean this is 20 to 27 uh that that is still quite a bit of kills you know 40 kill game that's sizable like it's 50 50 kill, kills minimum so yeah i mean it's been a wild early game uh especially around the bot lane like if you look that that's where a lot of the kills on his team have aggregated and then obviously singed singet himself having more deaths than the bot lane both together so pepper hands i guess all right claw in yeah everfrost and we are just going to go golden just to make sure kiana doesn't try anything double WQ deletes Ezreal as he will pick up a kill on to Renata as well. And this is just, this is how I love to play my mid lane. You just don't do anything. You don't have part in the game. And then in the end, you just like run around one shot people and enjoy your stacked magis. I love it. 10 out of 10. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you guys in the next one and stay awesome. The skins for Worlds 2022 have been selected. Let's get into it and have a look. Also, this is kind of a given by Такая толстая, огромная я.